podcast. Me ranting like a raving lunatic. Florentine podcast. Something a little different. Now we have options. So go fuck yourself. Listen to this podcast is because you are not listening to regular terrestrial radio anymore. Because it fucking stinks. Welcome to the Jim Florentine Comedy Metal Midgets Podcast on Riotcast.com. If you like the Awful Facebook uh, podcast, go to awfulfacebookposts.com. I got a bunch of new videos up there, me ripping apart Facebook posts. And Comedy Metal Midgets at Gmail is the email to send any garbage you see out there that I might like and use for the podcast. Like this week's podcast is going to be a Q and a uh, questions that you guys sent in that I answer on the podcast. You could send those in. I'll do another one at some point. Um, but yeah, that's the podcast uh, this week. All right, let's get right to the podcast. Q and a questions you guys sent in. I answer them. And the prank fo- phone call at the end will be, uh, a track off of Terrorizing Telemarketers, Volume 2, where I mess with telemarketers, is a track called Threesome. And that will end the podcast. So there you go. Here it is. The Q&A. All right. First Q&A question is... Um, What are your top favorite movies? Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a movie that if I see it on cable or something like that, I'll stop and watch it. Let me think. Office Space is definitely one. Love that movie. Uh, Pulp Fiction, Casino, Goodfellas. Uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Love that fucking movie. John Candy is genius in it. Steve Martin, genius. Um, Shit, I can't think. Well, there's a couple like rare ones. I probably talked about it before. A a movie called Buffalo 66 with Vincent Gallo. One of my favorites. The Ice Storm is another great one. Once Were Warriors, a movie out of New Zealand that I... I'm sure I've talked about before. It came out in like 94. The same year that Pulp Fiction came out. Love that movie. Fargo, of course, is great. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. But those those are the ones that pop into my mind right now. That I'll usually watch again and again if it's on. Boogie Nights, another one. Fucking love that movie. Um, hey Jim, how do you get prepared for your live performance or podcast? What rituals do you go through to get in character to be able to perform? Um, it's really not a character. I mean, look, I can amp it up for the podcast and get angry over shit. No problem. You know, just put it in front of me and I can, I can be disgusted by it. Um, but there's no real ritual. I just basically, you know. I, it all depends when I don't f- tape the podcast on a specific day. Whenever I have the time to do it, I do it. Squeeze in as far as like stand up. You know, just I, I'd like to chill in the back room before I go on. Not a lot of craziness. 
Just get the thoughts together. I'm always looking at notes before I go on. I've been doing that shit for years. Thank God for the iPhone now because before I would carry like index cards in my back pocket or just pieces of paper with just notes, any like new bits I was doing just to remind me before I go on. Now I just put it in the notes section of my iPhone. I look at that shit before I go on. I almost look like a fucking teenage girl before I go on stage and I'm just staring into my phone. Because I'm actually looking at bit. I'm like, all right, I got to remember to do this. Let me try to do this bit. Oh, yeah, definitely I want to try this. See if this works tonight. You know, that kind of shit. So that's how much pretty much I prepare. But nothing. I don't drink before I go on. It definitely affects my performance. So I'd, I'd you know, there's no reason to do it. I might have a couple afterwards, but no booze. I don't smoke pot. Just water, coffee before I go on, and maybe a fucking drink afterwards. But that's about it. Um, yeah, no, no, I don't do jumping jacks. I don't fucking shadow box. I don't do push-ups before I go on. I'm just gonna basically go up there and talk and just be myself. So I really don't have to do too much. You know, of course, you get that little nervous energy, and you're excited to get out there, and you feed off the crowd. But before that, I just more a mellow. Not so much craziness before you go on. Because you never know what you get to deal with in the crowd. The drunks and all that other bullshit, so. That's that. Um, yeah, what I'm trying to see what else we got here. Um... shit all right what's uh what's the best and or funniest encounter or interaction you've ever had with a fan and what is the worst fan encounter you ever had um hmm i remember when i first started i don't know i was doing it like three years something like that me and Don Jameson were doing a show, and uh, we were selling stuff after the show, and the, after the comedy show in the lobby or whatever, and this girl wanted an autograph. I, I guess my CD was out or something. I had a CD out. So I said, all right. She goes, can you write to Stacy? Uh, you give the best. And there's a line, so, you know, you're moving people. You're trying to get in and out. I think we had to do another show afterwards. No, actually, we didn't. So... But, you know, there's a line of people as so you want to move people. She goes, can you just write to Stacy? Uh, you give the best blowjobs ever. Or you're the blow blowjob queen, I think she said. And as I'm writing it, I'm like, okay. And I'm just, okay, Stacy, Stacy. I'm like, I go, why do, you, why, why do you want me to write that? She goes, because I give the best blowjobs. And, you know, I'm just I'm just being a dick. And I'm like, no, you don't. And she goes, no, I do. And I go, I go every girl that says they give the best blowjobs doesn't. I go, no guy, every guy's just told you, no, that was amazing. And I'm like, you don't give, she goes, I swear I give the best blowjobs. And there was a couple next door, a married couple, and they were they were there together. She goes, no, no, she is known for that, the girl. goes, she is known for that. I go, I don't believe her. And she goes, well, I do. I go, well, we'll prove it. She's like, well, how can I prove it? I go, why don't we go in the back room right now in the, in the backstage and, um, you know, give me a blowjob and we'll see. And she's like, what? Meanwhile, there's a line of like 15 people ready to meet me and Don. And I'm like, yeah, just let's go in the back. I'll find out. I'll tell you if you, if you give the best blowjobs ever. She's like, R -r right here? Uh, um, uh, no. And I'm like, see, see, there you go. See? She doesn't give the best blowjobs. She's just lying. You know what I mean? I got whatever. You know, that's all good. She goes, you don't believe me? I go, no, I don't believe you. I go, if you did, if you really gave him, you would give me one right now, and I can come out here and tell everybody how good it is. She goes, let's go. The girl dragged me, brought me in the back room, and gave me a blowjob. As the people were waiting online, Don's like, I go, Don, can you can you watch my stuff or just sell my stuff for me? He goes, where are you going? I go, um, she's giving me a blowjob. He's like, what? And, and everybody online, because it wasn't even loud in the club, that probably did eight or ten people are waiting, all heard what was going on. I think I even said, I'm going to get a blowjob. I'll be back in a few minutes if you guys want to hang. I'll, I'll sign my stuff. Walk right in the back office. She gave me a blowjob. And it wasn't the best one, by the way. On a scale of one to ten, it was probably a seven, which is great still, but it wasn't a ten. 
came out like 10 minutes later with my arms up in the air like I was Rocky and I just won the fucking belt. So that was probably the best fan experience. And you have to realize this is all stuff that happened between like, I don't know, 23 and 29 when I was an ass and just an idiot. You know, reliving my college years, you know. I didn't go away to college, so it's not like, you know, I was in a dorm and, you know, you were banging all these chicks in college. So that was basically like my college years, being on the road and doing dumb stuff like that. But I just, I was just goofing around like, no, you don't give the best blow, Joe. There's no way. And then she's like, let's go. And she did. And it was in the back room. So that was probably the best fan experience, which is pretty shallow, but it's a good story to tell the grandkids. Um, the worst one, I don't know. You know, you just get drunk people after the show. Usually you get them doing a show in the crowd, but if you're out in the lobby, I'll take pictures with people or whatever, meet them. And, you know, people are drunk and they say stupid shit. And you try not to get it, let it get to you, but sometimes it does. You know, uh, I'm trying to think of some examples. You were a pig tonight. You're sexist. You know, you know, you shouldn't have been the headline or that stupid stuff like that. It's like, I don't, you know. But, you know, you got to chalk it out to pe- people being drunk. And sometimes I'll go back at them, you know what I mean? It's like, sorry, I didn't, you know. Let, tell, next time, tell me what kind of jokes I should write, and then I'll write them for you. I'll get into it. Usually, I, sh- I should just blow it off. Again, no problem. Sometimes I'll go with it, you know, like, oh, man, you you the the, feet, the, the, the guy before you was way better. I go, yeah, I know. I know. I was telling the owner he should really go on after me. I don't know why I'm going on last. And they look at me like, what the fuck? Hey, wait a minute. I was supposed to put you down and you were supposed to come back and you agreed with me. So I'll do that sometimes. And then, I, you know, it'll irk me for like a minute or two. But then I got to realize, you know, they're nine beers in. I've had no beers. You know, when you're around drunk people and you're sober, how fucking annoying they could be when they don't shut up and they keep saying the same thing and whatever. So... That's usually the worst thing that a fan has ever done. But that doesn't even, it's no big deal. I'm over it quick and, you know, you try not to react to that horse shit. But what are you going to do? Um, what's going on with your stand-up special you filmed last fall? That's the one that's coming out this week. A Simple Man. So... There you go with that one. Um, Okay. Do you think your partner needs to be similar in most of your views? Or do you think you need someone opposite you to kind of balance things? What has worked or not worked in the past? That's a good one. Um, I think, you know... The, the dumb thing. Opposites attract. I don't believe that. I definitely don't believe that. Because the last... A uh, couple relationships I've been in, we didn't have a lot in common, and it, it was a problem. It's better to have stuff in common, something you're passionate about, that you both can enjoy, instead of one person really liking and the other one just goes along and tags along. In the beginning, when you get in the relationship, it's kind of like, oh, cool, man. I, I've never done this before. Sure, I'll, um, I'll do this. Yeah, I want to experience new stuff. Why not? Yeah, let's see what this is all about. You know, and even later in a relationship, you might do that. You're like, all right, you know, but then, you know, if you never did whatever it is and you're not really, real, you don't really love it, you're only going to do it a couple more times before you go, nah, I don't feel like doing that anymore. So I think that it's better to have a lot of things in common. It really is. This one girl I dated, she's like, you want to go to an art gallery? I'm like, no. She's like, you don't want to go? Oh, I love art. I'm like, nah, that's cool. She's you, you. Because I, w- I was thinking we could do that tonight. I go, nah, I go, I'm not going to have a good time there. I'm, that's, just not, that's just not me. I don't want to do that. She's like, okay. Didn't hold it against me, but that's something, I don't know. You know, I had a girlfriend that was in the country, 
like country music. And I would go to the country shows, and I didn't bitch. I'm not a big country fan, but, you know, they play their instruments. The musicians in the band are usually really good. They're usually like metal guys that just couldn't make a living doing metal. So, they, you know, they're in these big country bands, and they're great, and they actually sing. So, And I'll sit there and have a few beers and watch some live music. I got no problem. I won't bitch about it. I'll say, you know, look, you look at it like the whole show between the opening band and the headliner is like three hours, 8 to 11, whatever it is, a concert. Take the bullet for three hours. So what? It's three hours out of your life. I'd much rather do that than be in a dance club with fucking, you know, a bottle service and a bunch of douchebags and fucking button downs. You know, with their hands in the air. Yo, yo, yo. You know, a bunch of white guys. Yuck. With the, They're all dressed exactly the same. With their bottle of vodka. And the worst music in the world. So I'd rather go to... And plus the country show, there's a bunch of hot chicks there. I usually go to metal shows where, you know, there's not a lot of good-looking girls there. It's mostly dudes. So I have no problem with that. So, you know, and that thing, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. You know, and I had no problem with that. But, yeah, it, it's it's better to have stuff in common that you can both be excited that you're going to go do. Besides, like, a vacation, everyone gets to, Like, just think about how when you're in a relationship... When you got a vacation coming up and you can't wait to go to some warm spot in the middle of the winter, you're going to go there for four or five days, get a place right on the beach, you got the pool, you got the fucking tiki bar right there, you're going to do whatever the hell you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, so any activity, you know, if you had something in common with somebody, you could all be, both of you guys can be like, oh man, I can't fucking wait for this. I never dated a chick that was into Black Sabbath. That was passionate about it or just, you know, going to concerts or doing whatever or, or watching football on a Sunday. You know what I mean? A lot of girls will say they could sit there and watch football all day and then I have to call them out. I think it's more of an East Coast thing. Like the East Coast girls, you know, New Jersey, New York City, around that area where I live. They might go to the game because, you know, they got a ticket and they want a tailgate and then, you know. But they're not going to sit at a sports bar for six hours and watch two games back to back. And a lot of girls are going, no, I love football. I go, really? I go, can you sit in the Buffalo Wild Wings from one in the afternoon to seven o'clock at night? Well, I don't know if I could do that long, but I like when the Giants play. I'm like, okay, right. So when the Giants, you know, three and six after nine weeks, are you really going to go watch the Giants play the Browns at a one o'clock on a Sunday? Or are you going to go pick pumpkins? So definitely better to have a lot of things in common. And that, the next relationship I will, I need to have something in common with that person. A few things. Because whether it's movies, TV shows you like, you know what I mean? Like me and my ex, we didn't have anything in common with TVs. We watch a documentary here and there, but she watched The Voice and, you know, Lifetime shows and stuff like that. You know, the movies, she like, you know, I like horror films. I watch a nice horror film, some scared of shit out of you, a drama you know what I mean? Like a dark, depressing drama. I love those kind of fucking movies. Where it's real life shit. So, you know, if you just decide, hey, let's watch a movie tonight, you know, and then all of a sudden, like, and that, that takes you fucking two hours going through Netflix, and then you just wind up on a, all right, we'll watch this documentary on how bad the fucking food, the chemicals in the food is. Yeah, all right, I'll watch that. And then 10 minutes in, like, ugh, I really don't watch this. And she's thinking, I really don't watch this. So, don't buy into what opposites attract, attract, whatever. Does that answer your question? And that was from a girl. That was a good question. What has worked and not worked in the past? Well, yeah, I just said it basically doesn't work. 
All right, question. Any chance you can comment on O and A? I know you do both shows and might not be able to say much, but not looking for you to knock either one. Just looking for your view on the situation, the breakup they went through. Well, this is obviously like seven months old, but Opie and Anthony is a radio show. They're on satellite radio. Anthony got fired like a year and a half ago. He's got his own podcast he does. Opie still does, was doing radio with Jim Norton, who was my former roommate, a good friend of mine. Now they do two separate shows. Uh, I was just recently doing promotion for my uh, comedy special, and I did all three shows. I did Opie's show, I did Jim's show, and I did Anthony's show. So um, I don't know. I don't get involved in those radio wars, whatever's going on. I'm just trying to plug gigs. I don't take sides. You know, so you don't know what's been, what's really behind all the problems and stuff like that. So I try not to get involved. You know, that happens a lot when you go to a town and, uh, you know, the comedy club has radio set up for you where they do the same same radio stations every time, whoever, whatever comedian comes in town. And you just have to go there. And maybe I did the other guy's radio show to, the time before I was in town. And now this time I'm doing another one because that's what the radio, the comedy club has. And you have to do that as part of your contract, you know, to do all radio and TV to help promote your shows when you get in town. So... I don't know. I just try not to get involved and, you know, I don't like to get in other people's drama. I really don't give a fuck. And that's really true. I just like, whatever. Fucking work it out. It's not my problem. We're all adults. So I get along with all three. I got no problem with them. And that's about it. Um... Oh, this is actually for my son, and he's not with me right now, so. Uh, He says, Luke, I have a daughter your age. Her favorite song is Rock Bottom by UFO. Wow, that's cool. What's your favorite song? I would say my son's favorite song right now. Um, I'm going to go with Electric Funeral by Black Sabbath. He loves that song. Knows every word. He loves Iron Man, too, but he really likes Electric Funeral. So I'm going to go with Electric Funeral by Black Sabbath, which is crazy. I know. Um, I was wondering if you could only listen to five bands, past, present, and future music for the rest of your life. Who would they be? Ooh. See, you don't want, you know, if there's only five bands, you don't want all metal in there or hard rock. So I'm going to throw in ACDC. I'm going to throw in Black Sabbath. Um, I'm going to throw in the Rolling Stones. Uh, fuck, that's a good. I'm going to throw in Rage Against the Machine. And... Um, Fuck, I'm thinking somebody with a great catalog, you know, like nine, ten albums deep. That everyone's really fucking good. I don't know. I'll throw in Motorhead, Metallica, one of those. That's probably six. Some shit like that. So pretty much all metal except for the Stones. Uh, I wanted to hear your take on the Phil and Selmo white power incident. As well as the video that the machine head guy put out where he called Phil a big bully. What is your impression of Phil when he did that metal show? Phil is a former lead singer of Pantera. Um, He was on stage, this is probably like a year ago, and he did this whole thing, this white power thing on stage. And he was just being silly. He had a few drinks in him, and he was just being an ass. So, I mean, you know, I can see people be offended by it. You know, and then, you know, Pantera's always had the rebel flag, but that wasn't any racism. They're just fucking from Texas, you know, and that was their thing. You know, a big, like, you know, Southern Rock, Leonard Skinner fan. So um, they weren't using the the rebel flag like that, but Pantera was always like, people like, oh, they're racist with that flag. They're not at all. I know I know most of the guys in the band, and they're definitely not. And Phil, I think, had a few drinks. It was just fucking around. with a, It was a big jam session with a bunch of musicians that he's friends with. 
And he walked out on stage and did something silly. Somebody, of course, videoed it and fucking put it up. Bunch of fucking babies, everybody telling on everybody. You know, God forbid you have a private moment. Even though you're on stage, but it's like, really, do you have to go, oh, my God, look what he just did? If you are if you were at that show, it was a bunch of, like, metal dudes, you know, just jamming, like, classic rock songs and metal songs. Why would you do that? You're probably obviously a fan of his if you're at that thing. And then you're going to put that on the Internet and go, look what he did? What a bunch of fucking babies. Everybody just telling on everybody. When I got friends over for football on Sunday, the shit that's said at my house is just insane. And nobody's filming it. Nobody's recording it. Nobody's putting it on Facebook. Nobody's saying, can you believe what this person said? We just have a fucking blast and do a lot of drinking and just say stupid shit. And we have a fucking good time and nobody's going, oh my God. I don't know, man. I got no problem what they did. I know what he was doing. He even said, look, I was just I was just being an asshole, basically. And everybody's a fucking asshole at some point. So there you go. And um he was on he was on, on that metal show as a guest and he was great. Um he was a good guest and he's funny. And um I had no problem with him, so there you go. Um, what is your favorite city to do shows in? And then what city in upstate New York is your favorite place to come and do a show or just hang out? Um, I like coming to Buffalo. I love the crowds in Buffalo. Blue collar. Fucking drink beer. Want to hear some jokes. Don't take shit personally. They're not sensitive. I love that. Rochester. Syracuse, Albany, that whole fucking belt up there I like. You know what I mean? Love those kind of crowds. So there, um, and then, uh, I don't know, favorite city? I like St. Louis. St. Louis is a great comedy town. There's a funny bone in St. Louis. I love playing that club. There's a club in Atlanta called uh, Laughing Skull little small room. I love that room. That's uh, I'm doing that again in like August. Um, Pittsburgh is a good spot. Cleveland is one of my favorite comedy towns. I love Florida. There's such fuck ups in Florida and everybody's not from there and everybody's from everywhere else and it just it just works well. I don't know. So, you know. Philly, Philly's good. You know, Jersey, New York City. I like L.A. a lot. I it was used to bomb in L.A. And they were just like, oh, my God, this guy's fucking angry and whatever on stage. Or, Man, what's his problem? But then, I don't know, for some reason it changed out here. And you could be dirty and edgy and fucking angry and shit like that. And people like it. So I have a, a new fondness for... California crowd. San Diego's a great comedy town. So, um, let's see. Uh, I was just wondering about your opinion on the Beatles. Are you a fan? Um, no. I don't despise them. I respect them. I just never really get into them. I get into them a little, but uh, I definitely, you know, that was way, that was before my time, obviously. And I just, um, you know, basically whatever my older brother was born in the house, that's what I was into. My dad was in the 50s music. So when we drove around in a car, we were in the back seat. He just put 50s music on. He loved that shit. And I liked it. You know, um, but then I got into metal and stuff, but I respected that. And that was his music. And he always tried to force it on us, which he wasn't really forcing because I was digging the stuff. And I still listen to it to this day. I'll put on like Sirius Channel 5 or whatever the fuck that is, 50s. And I'll remember, you know, just remind me of driving around my dad. Uh, but then, you know, my older brothers, they were more into the Stones. So, you know, 
and the Hard Rock, the ACDCs, and they got, you know, some Leonard Skinner, the boys Boston, Black Sabbath, that kind of stuff. But the Stones were the one that they got me into, not so much the Beatles. So they didn't really have any Beatles playing, you know, when I was 12, 14, whatever like that, when I was just absorbing everything. So I think that's why I really didn't get into them. And then, I don't know, you go back and you're like, yeah, there's some, I don't know. For some reason, I'm just not a, a, a more of a Stones than the Beatles. So, um, there you go. Um, here's my question. Are there any non-metal or hard rock bands that you're a big fan of? Um... You know, I've talked about them and I played them before on my podcast. Blackberry Smoke, love those guys. Southern Rock with some country in it. Um, great band. Check them out if you're if you like that kind of Leonard Skinner meets Black Crows with a tinge of country. I don't know. But a band basically right out of the seventies. Um, but then I, you know. The Pretty Reckless is a band. Taylor Momsen, she used to be a child actress. I don't know what fucking show, what she was on. Um, I don't remember because I don't watch TV. But um, I like them guys a lot. She's got a great voice. They write good songs. They're really good live. Uh, Hailstorm is another band. Female fronted. I dig those guys a lot. Um, they're not really hard rock, more to rock vein. Um Leonard Skinner, I'm a big fan. Bob Seger. I'll listen to some Zach Brown stuff. Um, who else? Yeah, there's a band. There's another band similar to uh, Blackberry Smoke, Whiskey Myers. I'm digging. Another band, Cadillac 3, is that similar sound? Love old Rolling Stones. Yeah, I'm pretty much very fucking limited. You know, I used to like some of the 80s stuff, but then it's, I don't know. Most of it didn't stand the test of time. You know what, I was a big Missing Persons fan. Um, You know, some of the poppy shit just kind of like, if you listen to it, you're like, what is this? Because I remember putting it on with somebody in the car and they never heard it. Somebody younger, like, what the fuck is this? But I don't know. Uh, I used to be a big Missing Persons fan. Maybe because Dale Bozio was really hot. She was in Hustler, completely naked. I beat off to that constantly. Um, But I always like girl-fronted bands, too. So, yeah, there you go. I don't like any pop music. You know doesn't do anything for me. I, I don't listen to it. You know, I like some Eminem stuff, especially the early stuff. Marshall Mathers LP and, you know, uh, a few other ones. There was like three or four of them. Even the newer stuff is good, too. But um, I like his stuff, too. Um, yeah. All right, next question. Has anyone ever bought you a craft beer after one of your gigs? Um, yeah, probably. They probably tried, but I wouldn't take it. Um, I'm not a fan of craft beers. I don't know if I did a podcast on craft beers. I don't think I have. I don't like the craft beers. I don't like it. If I have to drink one, I will, but I'd rather not. Some bars don't have regular beer. I'm not a Coors Light or a Bud Light or a Miller Light guy either. I like Heineken. I'll drink Corona if I have to. Um... I don't like PBR. I don't like the taste. So, sometimes I got to drink one of those fucking, I don't know. But I don't like the craft beers. No, I don't. I'm not a fan. I don't want fruit in my beer. I'll have it in the morning when I have breakfast. I don't need it in my fucking beer. I just want beer to taste like beer. That's what it should taste like. Not great. Get a nice buzz on, and that's it. 
when and where was your last upper decker? Now, an upper decker, I don't know if you guys know, is when you shit in the top of the tank, of the toilet tank. You take the lid off the top, and you shit in the top of the tank. And then you put the lid back on, and then what happens is whenever someone flushes the bowl, little pieces of shit go into the toilet that it's been sitting in the tank. And you probably get about four or five flushes before everything comes out. When I was younger, we used to take a lot of upper deckers. We used to go to parties, kids in our class or whatever like that in high school, and go to their parties. We'd take upper deckers and leave. If we didn't like the service at a place like an Applebee's or some shit, we'd go take an upper decker in the bathroom, a Dunkin' Donuts. I remember the guy used to always be mean <clears throat> to me and my brother and his friends. So we'd go in there and we'd take an upper decker in the bathroom I know, it's rude, it's disgusting, it's wrong, somebody has to clean it, I get all of that, but it's still funny. But I don't, the last one I took was probably when I did a, uh, me and Don Jameson did these DVDs, these hidden camera DVDs called Meet the Creeps, where we go around with a hidden camera, we fuck with people, and we took upper deckers at a cheap hotel room, and then called the front desk and said there was something wrong with the toilet. And the guy keeps flushing the bowl and piece of shit keep coming down. And then he takes the lid off the top. He's like, oh, man. He goes, uh, change rooms. Somebody did something bad in there. I'm like, what happened? He goes, uh, somebody did something bad. Just change rooms. And then we change rooms. And then Don takes an upper decker like 10 minutes later in this tank. I call the front desk again. He comes. He takes the top of the lid off and throws us out of the hotel. I remember my manager at the time. This came out in, what, 2000? I don't know when we did Meet the Creeps. 2004, maybe. 2005 was the first one we did, something like that. But I remember my manager at the time going, he goes, you realize if you put this out here, of you sitting on top of a toilet tank taking a shit, that you will never get any lead role in a romantic comedy. I go, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that guy. Why would I get that role? Who cares? He's like, this could be damaging to your career. And then fucking, you know, then uh, Jackass came out fucking six years later and Johnny Knoxville's, you know, eating out of a porta john or doing whatever. And then he's a fucking big movie star. So nobody cared about that shit. So um, so I, I think that was the last time I took an upper decker. It's fun for the whole family. I mean, I did take one on Louis, Louis C.K. show, Louis on FX uh, last season. Um, I took an upper decker and as I was taking it, cause he was puking in the toilet at the same time I was taking an upper decker on the top of the toilet. I slipped off the top of the toilet, hit my head on the sink, cracked my head open on the floor and died. And that's how the season ended. And the episode ended is me dying from taking an upper decker with my pants around my ankles. So there you go with your upper decker. Uh, what else we have here? Um, did Comedy Central ever ask you to do one of that roast? You would be perfect for that. Would love to have here you do the one on that asshole, Justin Bieber. Um, no, they never did ask me to do a roast. I've done a couple roasts before. Um, um. Uh, I roasted D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. I roasted Sebastian Bach. Did I? No, no. Uh, uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot Stone Sour. That was on Access TV. We did them live. And I've done a couple. There was a. They did a roast of me in New York City with uh, Jim Norton and Rich Voss and Bonnie McFarlane and Bob Levy and a bunch of my friends and stuff. And uh, um. I've never been asked for Comedy Central. I would love to do a roast. I think I'd be good at it. I'm usually not good at most things, but a roast is right up my alley. I did a bunch of roasts on the Howard Stern show. Done those too. I love doing roasts. I'm good at that. I'm not good at fucking... I wouldn't be good on Saturday Night Live. I'm not a good sketch actor. None of that bullshit. I don't do characters. But a roast saying mean shit and at me not taking anything personally, I'd be perfect. So I would love to do a Comedy Central roast. It launches people's career to the fucking next level. Pretty much everyone that has done one, it's, you know, a comic. So, no, they didn't ask. And if they did, I would do it in a second. I would do it for free. 
Um, and, you know, and the thing with that is, like, the two rows that I did for TV on Access TV, they were live, so nobody's cutting any jokes. And I was doing, like, a 10-minute set. So, you know, if, like, you know, five jokes don't work out of the 20, 20 that you do, you know, they show that because it's live. On Comedy Central, they cut your set. I think you do, like, eight or nine minutes. They cut it to, like, four or five, and they cut out the bad jokes. Any jokes that bomb, that'd be fucking great. So you basically kill on there every time. I would love that. Um, what's your thoughts on that's what she said? I don't know. What the fuck is it? I, I don't even know. I don't have any thoughts on that. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I'm inter- okay, here. I'm interested to know a little bit more about your divorce. Do you have to pay a ton of child support or alimony to your ex-wife? Seems like the guys usually get fucked over in divorce settlements, and I was wondering if this happened to you, too. I completely understand if you can or don't want to get into details. Thanks, man. I love the podcast. Um, no, I do not have to pay a ch- ton of child support. Um, alimony, nah, you know, um, yeah, was paid. Not, I, I didn't get fucked over. I can't really get into details. There's like confidentiality agreements and all that shit. Even though a lot of the shit got out there in the press. But, um, uh, didn't, definitely didn't get fucked over financially. But I also had a prenup, so that helps. If you don't have a prenup, you know, people get fucked over, especially people that, have way more money than the other person. So, um, it, you know, and it's not, the guys aren't getting fucked over as much anymore because they basically go by how much money you earn. You know, with women working now and some even making more than the guy. Like if a woman's making more than a guy and you have kids, the woman has to pay alum, uh, pay child support. They just go by on a calculator how much money you make compared to the other person and they average it out and this is and how many days you have your kid and how many times they sleep over your house and how many times they sleep over there it's all factored in but also your salary is a big thing so if you have let's just say you have 50 percent custody of your kid with your ex-wife and she makes a hundred thousand and you make seventy thousand she has to pay you child support she makes thirty thousand dollars more than you she will have to pay you child support so the guy doesn't get fucked over as much anymore. The laws are starting to go more in their favor and they're more understanding because guys are staying home and watching their kids and the women are out working. So it's a little different now. So there you go. Um, so it wasn't so bad. And, you know, whatever, man. You take a hit, you move on. What are you going to do? You know, it's like investing in something. You get a good hot tip and you think you're going to make some money and then you go, ah, oh, fuck. All right. All right, that didn't fucking work out. Guess I got to write a check. Uh, may I speak with the person who takes care of the phone bill, please? What do you mean takes care of it? Like watches it? Uh, well, basically, the person that pays for the darn thing, sir. Well, there's three people here, and we all kind of pay. In. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm calling, sir, was to reduce y'all's collective phone bill. Should I wait? Should I get the other two guys so okay. we can all listen in? Because we all... I can wait. Are they there? No. Oh, okay. When when will y'all be together in one spot at one time? How yeah. about Saturday at noon? No. No? No. Nine o'clock at night sometime during the week? No. Okay, well, listen, I'll try I'll try on Wednesday. Maybe I'll catch you guys on Wednesday, maybe not, okay? Well, no, Wednesday the one guy has to go into work for an hour because his boss has to yell at him. So Wednesday probably wouldn't be good. I'll just call Thursday night and hope for the best. Well, Thursday, the other guy's got a dentist appointment at like 7.30. Well, I'll just call back at 9 o'clock. Well, then I got a, uh, I got a meeting with this, uh, this counselor. You I know, but if you... home on Sunday? Sunday? Yep. About 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 o'clock, something like that. But the problem is I'm going to be mowing the lawn, though, and I'm not going to be able to... All you got to do is, is shut the lawn more off and come inside and listen for a couple of minutes, then go back and cut your grass. Well, the problem is, you know, I can only borrow the neighbor's lawnmower from that time on Sunday. You're telling me your neighbor only loans you lawnmower 
At 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. The other neighbor borrows it from like 4 to 6. So we take turns. See, it's this really good mower that cuts the stuff really good. A lawnmower to me is a lawnmower, sir, as long as you keep the blade sharp, which I do myself. No, this, this, one, this one's good, though. It's uh, silver. So it's a good one. What does the color have to do with the cutting grass, sir? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, how about Thursday at 7.30? Uh, i got to give my grandmother a bath. I'll give you a call next week. Well, which day next week are you going to call, though? Just so Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. I think the one guy has to go to court. Doesn't make any difference. Tuesday. I'll call you back on Tuesday. You find out when they're going to be available. Then we can schedule a final call, okay? Um, I don't have a speakerphone. How are we all three of us going to listen? I haven't got a clue, sir. If you got more than one phone, everybody can listen on a different line. Uh, no, we only have the one phone. I'll borrow a phone from somebody else and plug it in your walls. I um, can't. I only got the one outlet, though. I can't put another got phone in. is get a three-way plug from Radio Shack. That's all. You put a three-way plug in the wall. You plug in one end. It's got three outlets. You plug in three different phones. You borrow one from the neighbor. Listen to what I got to say. Return the phone to the neighbors. And you're all done. Okay? Well, I'm That's just good. trying to find if I can borrow a phone from the neighbor, though. I'm already borrowing a lawnmower. Though. I don't know if I'm going to be able to borrow a phone, too. Not a problem. 740, sir. Thank Maybe you. if I could do the lawnmower on the phone at the same time. Okay.